With me now is our business correspondent, Amir Paivar. Um, Amir, some of the companies that have already sort of lined up, really, to speak to Iran, they are big names, aren't they? They are indeed. Uh, we've had the very first today reacting about, uh, to the questions whether they're going into Iran or not, mm -hmm. including Daimler Benz Trucks, who's going back into manufacturing with an Iranian counterpart in Iran, heavy trucks. But Mercedes Benz says is also prepared to export to the country, wouldn't give much details to Reuters. And BMW said it will all depend on the political and economic situation in the country in the future. And then we had, for example, Opel, which said because of US primary sanctions mm. and because it's partly owned by GM, it will not be able to change its position at the moment. This is interesting, isn't it? Because there are still sanctions and restrictions in place for a lot of US companies when it comes to dealing with Iran. I'm thinking of oil, for example. You can't process the transactions if you're a US bank. That's right. So the, the US sanctions on non-US entities mm. and individuals are gone now, but still US companies cannot do business with Iran. There is a clause in the deal that allows non-U.S. subsidiaries of U.S. firms to engage in business. But the whole, uh, the whole text of this deal is so complicated, even to some mm. lawyers, that they prefer to be cautious at the moment, like Opel, mm. wait for U.S. Treasury to give them more detailed guidelines before they engage with Iran. With Iran. Mm, so clearly there is a lot of potential there, but it might be a, a, a situation where people will hold back just for a while to see how it uh, goes along. But in the meantime, of course, Iran is planning out a strategy for itself for the next five years. Uh, tell us what you know of that. Oh, absolutely. So the uh, president yesterday, just a day after this, uh, the sanctions were lifted, appeared in the parliament and pro, uh, portrayed a, a, his vision of the country's future. Uh, Five-year pl uh, development plan which targets 8% growth. Mm, staggering. Uh, staggering, it is indeed. Um, in uh, bringing foreign direct investments of up to 50 billion dollars a year and this is a huge amount mm. for that to realize he will need to do some internal reforms in the country as well to do with corruption transparency labor laws and commercial codes mm. and, and do you think it will be able to manage this it's, it's a huge transition sort of opening itself up uh, to the wider world and also as you say managing things like corruption bureaucracy uh, areas that have been stumbling blocks for Iran in the past he definitely has the motivation to do so has the right team in place seems to have the right plan as well but like you say not all is in government's hands there are other institutions and uh, centers of power in the country that could potentially tackle those efforts especially when it comes to legal issues when it comes to corruption so uh, it will it, it will depend how much they are part of this rejuvenation mm. of the economy and how much they will collaborate with the government it's gonna be fascinating isn't it um, Amir I know we're gonna be speaking to you a little bit later on so thank you very much for coming in